What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Fusion 360 for woodworking tutorial for you. So in today's video, I wanted to show you how I would model out a table for Fusion 360. And we're gonna set this up in such a way that we can get a parts list out of it a little bit later. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so for this example, we're gonna create a very simple table. We're gonna assume this table is going to basically have a plywood sheet or some kind of a sheet making up the top and then we'll make the wood down on the bottom. We may do a more complex table a little bit later, but I don't want to focus as much on measurements as I do just kind of the way all of this comes together. So to start off, what we're going to do is we're going to draw our top sheet. And one thing you need to be aware of when working with uh, when working with something like this is you need to think about how you want to model your table. So you have to decide if you want to start from the bottom up or the top down. In this case, we're gonna start with the top down. And so we're just gonna say that we're gonna create a sketch right here. And you're gonna mouse over this to tell this which plane you wanna draw this on. In this case, I'm gonna set this for right here. And we're gonna draw either a line or a rectangle. That's kind of up to you. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do the rectangle, but we can do this with the lines as well. The two point rectangle is gonna allow us to set a point right here and then we can type in our two distances that we want this to go. So in this situation, you can see how the distance on the left is selected. I'm gonna type in 48, then I'm gonna hit the tab key. That's gonna move my selection to this other piece. I'm gonna type in 48 again and hit the enter key. So what we've done is we've created a 48 inch rectangle. So now we can use this in order to extrude this up to create our top panel of our table. So to start off, we're gonna click on Finish Sketch. And then we're gonna activate the Extrude tool in order to extrude this up. So one thing that's gonna be really important about this is we want to create a new component rather than a new body. So if we create all of these objects as components, then we'll be able to come in here and like schedule them out a little bit later with like a cut list. So we wanna make sure that we're creating this as a component. We're gonna start with our distance, which we're gonna say for this exercise is gonna be three quarters of an inch. So we're just gonna type in a value of three quarters and hit okay. You can see how this easily extruded this up to three quarters of an inch. And so what we have is we have our first piece in here. And notice that this got created over here as a component. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna label this and label this as if it shows up how you wanted it to show up in your cut list. So for example, I'm gonna type in three quarter inch plywood. And then I'm gonna type in the dimensions. So I'm gonna type in 48 inches by 48 inches and hit the enter key. So now this is labeled, so when we schedule it out later, it's gonna show up properly. So now what we need to do is we need to model out our legs and our base pieces. So like our apron and then our legs. We may put a support across the middle. Um, I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible for this example. But what we wanna do is we need to start by creating another sketch. So I'm gonna rotate down, click on create sketch, and in this case, we don't need to click on one of these planes. We can click on the bottom of our table and make that the plane that we're trying to draw along. So you can see how when I click on this, this rotates my view around so that I'm aligned with this table. And so for this kind of table, this is actually going to be fairly simple. Um, we can just type in R to activate the rectangle tool. And I'm gonna draw a rectangle across this face. But then what I wanna do is I wanna activate the offset tool. What the offset tool will do is that'll allow me to offset this in by a distance that I dictate. So in this case, um, because this is square, I can just dictate that I want this to be offset in five inches and hit the enter key. Offsets this line in and we can use this to model out the wood that's gonna go around this edge. And so we're gonna offset this again just by mousing over this. So one thing you may notice is when you select this, you should be getting all of these edges selected. If you don't, it's because you don't have chain selection selected. So you can either check this box or you can go through and just select these manually. It doesn't really matter, but chain selection will make that work a lot faster. But in this situation, what we want is we want our boards going around here to be at, uh, an inch and a half thick because they're gonna be two by fours. So what we can do is we can actually do math inside of this. 
Um, and notice that you can't offset off of this line because this line was offset already. You have to use the perimeter again, but what we want to do is we want to offset this in to a distance of five inches plus the thickness of our boards. So in this case, we can actually do this math inside of this box. So I can just type in five plus 1.5 and hit the enter key. And so you can see how now what we have in here is we have a whole face inside of our sketch making this up. And so there's a couple different ways we could do this from here. One thing we're gonna wanna do though is we're gonna want to create these all as individual pieces. Otherwise you could just come in here and you could just, you could just extrude this down and just create your whole apron as a single piece. But because we're trying to model this as if we were gonna do a cut list, what we wanna do is we just wanna draw lines along the edges using the line tool while we're in sketch mode. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna split all of these up into individual faces. Then we can click on finish sketch. So now you can see how I can mouse over these and I can actually extrude them down by selecting these and using the extrude tool. And one thing that's gonna be important when you do this is make sure when you extrude this down that you use the new component operation rather than the join operation. And when we do this, we can just type in a value of 3.5 and hit the enter key. And so notice that this gets created in here as a component. And so now we have one copy of our component making up our base piece here and we need to create three more running around this edge. So there's a couple different ways that we could do this. In this situation, what I wanna do is I wanna create a mid plane. And so I just wanna create a mid plane, which is basically a construction plane that goes between two points. You're just gonna to go to construct mid plane. Then we're gonna click on this face right here. We'll rotate around, click on this face right here. What that does is that creates a construction plane right here. And so basically what we're doing is we're looking for the center point here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch real quick right here. I'm just going to draw a line on that plane that runs down. I'm going to click on finish sketch. You could also do this with like an axis if you wanted to. Um, but in this case, let's go ahead and do this. So all I did is I just created this central point. Well, the reason I did that is because we're going to go into create under pattern, we're gonna use what's known as a circular pattern. A circular pattern is gonna allow us to select this component, and it's gonna ask us for an axis to rotate this around. I drew this edge so we can draw copies of this object based on this central point. And so what I wanna do is I wanna set this so that there's four copies. So you can see how now, when I finish this, this is gonna create four copies equally spaced around this center point. So if I click on OK, you can see on now, I have four copies of this one component. And so that's something I wanna talk about here is when we look at this component, these are all instances of the same component. And what that means is that means that if I take this and I rename it, and let's check our length on these really quick. So I'm just going to measure between here and here. All right, so these are 38 inches long. So what I could do is if I rename one of these by double clicking in here, I could call this, you could either do raw dimensions or actual dimensions, that's kind of up to you, but we could say two by four by 38 inches. Well, you can see how, because these are all instances of the same component, when I made, when I made a change to one, the others changed as well. What that means is if we schedule this out on a drawing, these are going to show up and you'll actually get a count of these pieces. So if you name these and you can leave, you can put inches in here as well if you decide that you wanna do that. But now we'll get a count of these on our final drawing page. So if you model these as instances of the same component, you can actually create a cut list of different things that you need on that page. We'll talk more about that in a second, but I wanna go ahead and just really quick model out a couple legs. So we're just gonna create one more sketch. And these are gonna be very simple legs. So I'm just gonna say maybe they're four by fours. So we'll just draw a little rectangle in here and we'll just call it three and a half by three and a half. And again, very simple table, but we can get more in depth on something else in the future. Well, we're just gonna draw a three and a half inch by three and a half inch leg. We're gonna click on finish sketch, then we're gonna extrude that down. So we'll just use the extrude tool. 
We'll select this, we'll extrude it down. Again, remember that you want to create a new component with this. And we're gonna go ahead, we'll give this a height of, we'll call it, we'll call it 36 inches just for this exercise. And we'll click on OK. So now we can do the same thing. And remember, this is a component, so we can call this four by four inch or four by four by 36 inches. And then we can just use the rectangular pattern tool again, or the circular pattern tool to select this component, select this axis, and create four copies and click on OK. And so now we have our very simple table in here. You can turn your sketches off for the moment. So obviously there's nothing super special about this. It's not a very complex table, but it allows us to kind of demonstrate um, the way that we can put these pieces together. Well, now I wanna talk about how to create a drawing from these. So we've got our table in here and we need to go ahead and save this. So go ahead and save it as whatever you wanna call it. So I'm just gonna click on save and I'm just gonna call this simple table, click save. And then we can click on this drop down right here to go into the, the drawing workspace. So we can just click on this button, go down to drawing and click from design. And it's gonna ask us what the reference is. In this case, we wanna create new. Um, I'm fine with 11 by 17. You can change that to whatever you want. If you just have like a letter printer or something, you could also do eight and a half by 11. But, um, and we're gonna go ahead and leave our units as is, or we're gonna click on okay. Well, what that's going to do is that's going to take us into the drawing workspace and it's going to ask us to place a base view. So in this situation, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click up here in order to create a base view of my table. So if you click on OK and you get out of there, you're going to notice that this drops this viewport on your page. And so you can right click on this and you can click on edit view in order to adjust this view. So for example, Let's say that I wanted this to have an isometric view. I could adjust that using these settings. Notice that there's different styles in here, but you can also adjust the scale. So let's say, for example, that you wanted this image to be bigger. You could go ahead and you can set this instead of 1 to 20, you can set it to like 1 to 16 or 1 to 5. So you can adjust the size of this object on this sheet by adjusting the scale. So let's say that I wanted an isometric view here. I could set this to 1 to 10. Click on close and notice that you can click on this point and then move your mouse in order to place this view. But then you can also add other views using this option right here. So you can add, for example, another base view and come in here and click and you could create a front view of your table. So I could create this front view right here. I can adjust this so it's a little bit bigger and click on OK. But then you can also start adding things like dimensions. We'll get a little further into this in a future video, but notice that I can add dimensions based on objects that we've placed in here. But then the other thing that I wanted to point out is you can also insert a table. Well, a table, if we select a drawing view, so in this case we're going to select this object, allows us to create a table and what that's going to do is that's actually going to give us our parts list based on the components that we created in here. This is why creating components is so important as you can see how this actually gives you a count of your different quantities of different things in your model. So you have one three quarter inch plywood sheet, you have four two by four by 38 inch boards, then you have four four by fours. So, and depending on how detailed you get, you could add more things in here like screws and other parts and pieces. One thing you're going to notice right now is this is telling us that our material is steel. That's because we haven't adjusted our material inside of Fusion 360. If we were to apply a material, so and it, the way that I usually do this is I just type the S key. That allows me to search for a tool and then I can just type in the word material and look for the option for physical material that's going to pop up a little window over here for the material library. Well, let's say that we wanted this to be, we'll go ahead and call it oak for right now. I can actually drag this material onto different objects inside of Fusion 360. And then once this is in here, you can see how it shows up as in this design. I can drag it on all of my other pieces. And notice that when I drag it on one component, it gets dragged on the others as well. And then if I save this, so if I click on save, click OK, go back to my drawing. 
you're going to notice up here there's a little there's a little you get a little warning down here and also up here saying that changes have been made well you can update this by clicking on this button right here so now instead of my material showing up as steel it's showing up as wood we'll talk more about creating different plans in a future video but you can see how by planning ahead with your components then you can easily create or set this up so that it'll generate a cut list for you in the future you can also create plans with dimensions and other things like that so that's where I'm gonna end this video leave a comment below and let me know what you thought was this helpful to you did you know you could do all this in fusion 360 I just love having that conversation with you guys if you like this video please remember to click that like button down below if you're new around here remember to click that subscribe button for new fusion 360 content every week as always thank you so much for taking the time to watch this i really appreciate it and i will catch you in the next video thanks guys